here with my player partner, RB sensation, Miss Daniqua. What's, What's going on with you? Good, good, good. Daniqua, please tell the fans a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Daniqua. I grew up in Hollywood, Florida, born and raised. Got to look Florida all day. I believe in the Florida Georgia line because I'm now living in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so, as far as you being an R&B artist, R artist, I want to go because I want to go right into it. What are some of the difficulties that you find, and how do you feel about people saying that R&B is dead? Hmm. Well, first of all, I feel like anywhere we go right now, and there's no offense to trap music. I love trap music. I love all the trap artists, but um, anywhere that I perform right now is mainly like clubs, and all the artists are mainly artists coming in, there's not a lot of R&B singers showing up to these spots. I, I happen to be just one of them that will do it one out of maybe three and right. I'll show up. So um, that's one of the difficulties. And also being taken serious as an artist, as a female artist, because some men, men, I don't know, but yeah. I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm kind of gear in on that. I think too, uh, actually out here in Atlanta, uh, me would definitely be in the industry right now. I don't think there, I think there's only actually one event that I kind of seen that's only geared for R&B artists. The rest of course, like intermingle with them. They're also with rappers, but there needs to be more structured events just with R&B artists, displaying their talent. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Um, Cause of course, a lot of even R&B artists, they can't perform in strip clubs, but it's not there. It, it, it's, 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 it's a different situation. It's not like you. You know what I'm saying? No, it's, it's not. So I definitely think in the city, it needs to be more R&B structured events for R&B artists uh, to display their talent. Um, you are also being a female in the industry. Can you kind of uh, elaborate on that? Okay, as a female, I mean, just being taken seriously. You know, I'm not no ugly person, so they look at me and be like, "Oh, she's pretty." Okay, she got a voice, but that is about it. You know, um, but I've worked at building a relationship with DJs that I know respect me and they know of me, they know about my life, that's important, um, like you. And then I got two other promoters that I just stick with, you know, and build relationships with, so that way y'all can better understand me, that way you know what venues to place me in, and you know, you know how to help me, you know, because yeah, in, in this industry with females, it's very, very hard because we're not taken seriously. Why do you think females in the industry are not taken seriously versus males? <laughs> I don't know, that's a good question. I should be asking some of the men that, you know? Yeah, um, me, me personally, I, I feel like it, it was crazy because Nicki Minaj, they was having an interview with her and she was just describing just as far as being, also being taken seriously in the industry because she's a female. And, it, and um, of course, you know, they want to say it because if you, you know, you wanna, when, you, when, you, when you take your shit real seriously, of course it comes off a certain way, but then of course they're gonna come, oh, she's acting like a bitch. Yeah, and I get that sometimes. But, but no, it, it's, it's, not, it's not about that. It's, at the end of the day, it's about business. Yeah. You got to protect yourself, of course, as a woman because you already know people are trying to get over, trying to manipulate, do things which they do uh, more so everybody. But being a female, as I said, it's always a lot harder because it's a male dominating industry, unfortunately. Um, but I want to say it's also too much attention. Very important. Yeah, and unfortunately, my team is a lot of times behind the scenes, but that's still a good team. I appreciate everybody that rocks with me. Um, before we get into your singers, uh, colors, 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 right? Before we get into that, what were some of your inspirations as an artist? Oh my God! Okay, my mother. Well, well to even do R&B because you could have been rap. Yeah, I could have been a rap tonight. Right. I, maybe I can, you know, spit a couple balls, but okay. I'm a singer, true and true. Um, but I grew up singing in the church. But um, my idol has always been with Houston, and then my mother right after that, and then Anita Baker. Okay. And when I say those three were really on my mom, but when I say Anita Baker and Whitney Houston, that should already let you know just how serious I take the music because those women, mm -hmm. East with the microphone. But just not That's that, amazing. the stage presence, everything, you know, the vibrato, like everything, like every note hits right. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always, since I was a younger child, I, I prided myself on trying to not necessarily copy everything that Whitney Houston does, but I want to capture the crowd because she was always so good at doing that. So I took that from her and took Anita Baker's smoothness, you know, how I'm doing it. I respect that, that's what's up. Um, 
So your single, Colors, tell us a little bit about that, how that came about. Colors is a real song. Colors is for, is dedicated to you, is dedicated to me, is dedicated to everyone. If you've ever felt judged, if you ever felt like people just didn't get it, but if you had people in your corner that really, they had one foot out the door and one foot in, that's what Colors is all about. It's a song that's relatable. That's why a lot of people, they do love it. I don't perform it in clubs because, of course, it's not for the club scene. Right, right, right. But if I were to be in a lounge or something, I would perform that song every day, all day, because it's a lovable, likable song. So outside of outside of you doing music, what else do you do to help uh, do 
it's your prayer. Outside of doing music, I mean, you know, I write. You know, I do have kids, yeah. They try to tell you that you can't do it with kids, but I do it. Um, I also do own a business, and a lot of times um, a percentage of my business is being used to pay for my music and things that I need to take care of for my artistry. Investing, investing in yourself. Investing in that's, myself. That's pretty much key that's word for all of you. saying you invest in your You gotta invest in your craft, and you gotta have a working budget. If you don't have one, then it just makes no sense to do what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Another, she, she's hitting all, all, all the, the good key, the key situations as far as being an artist. Um, have you ever been at the point too where you've been like, man, I just want to give up? Yes, and I actually did that in um, 2003 when my father died. I was like, this just ain't gonna work. And at that moment, I was actually a part of a group. Our name was Epiphany's Trio, and we were we were becoming well known in Miami and Boca Raton and all that. Like people were feeling us, but you know, my dad died. I was just like, uh, I think the music in me died or something. So it wasn't until like 2014 that I started back writing music, recording, and everything. So I had to learn studio etiquette all over again. Because when I would make mistakes, I would talk to Benjamin and be like, don't talk, because that thing sounds good to me, but not to you. Yes, I have a couple of upcoming shows. Well, I'm coming to pregame on Saturday. Okay. Yes, okay. So y'all meet me at pregame on Saturday. I'm coming for you to perform my song accusations, which is another single that I put out alongside my homeboy skin tape poet. And um, I got more shows after that. Y'all need to follow me on IG at Negro, D E N Q U I A, and you'll find out what else I got to find. Yeah, you guys see what's going on, and I appreciate Mr. Nick coming in. Again, follow him on Instagram, all social media sites. She'll be performing, as she said, at pregame next week. Hip hop versus R&B concert going down. Uh, birthday bash, she said. So a lot of people are going to be here at the end of the season of the So with it, we'll be back. Shout out to the next season. They think they know me.